Hello, so moving along with the FSL pipeline, hopefully you now have some beautiful nifties, both of your bold data and your structural data. So the next step is to remove the skull on the structurals. And of course, there is a corresponding quality assurance step. Um, we won't be doing the skull stripping of the functional data um, yet. We're gonna do that along with our first level analysis. So just so you know where we are, we are right here. So the last video, and you can look for it on the channel, is the QA step. I did not cover the converting of the DICOM to the Nifty. Um, I did give some sample code in a Tumblr post that I'll link to below um, for that. Uh, that may or may not work for you. And then the QA step, I will link to that over here somewhere, or maybe here. Right here, you can click through to that video if you need to. So we are going to remove the skull on the structural images and run the QA for that. So removing the skull on the structurals is pretty important. It's pretty important that you do a good job because when it comes to the image registration, the image registration algorithms assume the skull and other non-brain um, have been removed. And so if you leave something that's not brain, typically those things are really bright, like the eyeballs and the skull, and they can really interfere with the quality of your image registration. And I think I'll do a quick video after this to explain how the image registration is done, and that will shed some light on why it's so important that you remove these bright things. It turns out the skull stripping of the functional data, you can be a little sloppier with it, and there are two reasons for that. One the uh, contrast is much lower, uh, brighter things are less bright, but most importantly, the degrees of freedom for the image registration of the bold data to the subject's structural is typically limited to three or six degrees of freedom. So it doesn't have a lot of room to move around. Whereas when the subject structural is registered to the MNI template has a lot more freedom, especially if you're using the nonlinear registration, but we'll get there. Let's just worry about removing the skull and the eyeballs today. So the primary tools that you'll use are BET, uh, the brain extraction tool of FSL, and FSL View to run the QA. Um, I highly recommend when playing around with BET, I'm gonna go over some of the settings for BET. Typically, if for a couple of subjects you play around and you find the settings of BET that work really well for them, if you're using the same image acquisition for all your structurals, um, it should work pretty well for most of your subjects. So here's the general um, structure of the call to BET. You have BET, you have some input file, some output file name. Now importantly, and this will become more clear when we do the Model 1 setup, which will include the registration, I would like for you to name your output file the same thing as the input file, but with the adding the extension underscore brain. And that's because I'd like to use FNERT, the nonlinear registration, and it actually uses the, skull, the image with skull on it, as well as the image without skull. And you only input the skull stripped one, and it finds the one with skull simply by assuming you only have that difference in the naming convention, this underscore brain. Uh, you'll see in a second in the script, I'll show you uh, how I did that. So some common options I really like to use. Um, minus M it generates the binary mask. That's what I like to use for the QA step. Although you don't have to, you can just use the actual skull stripped image. Minus R is the robust estimation of the center. So um, the way BET works is it starts with a, a ball around the center of the uh, brain, wherever it thinks the center is, and it slowly, this ball creeps out and um, a little bit, it's like a tessellated sphere is what it is. And it keeps creeping out until it hits a boundary and then it stops. Uh, there's a great animation. I'll find it and plop it into um, a video later. Uh, but that's what it's doing. So if the center is estimated poorly, it doesn't do well. So one of the flags I find offers the most improvement is this minus R. It basically does, it calculates where the center is a couple of times. Uh, and it improves the center estimation that way. Minus F, and then you can put a number here. Uh, smaller numbers will give a larger brain outline and bigger will be smaller. Uh, I found in the past has helped a little bit. Um, I, I think 
yeah, it depends. This, this used to help more with some of the imaging data I had probably at UCLA, and actually the data that we're using were collected there. So uh, the minus G is this vertical gradient. So positive values give a larger outline at the top of the brain, and otherwise you'll get uh, larger at the bottom. So these are the flags I definitely typically play around with, but you can look at the help for BET and see that there are more. So if you just type BET, let me cover up some of my my mess here. Um, you can see there are quite a few options here. Um, these other ones are used for Sienna. Sometimes this minus B one helps a little bit, but um, yeah, so if you're doing 4D data, you'll have to use this minus F option, uh, but we're not doing that. We're gonna let the, we're gonna do that in our level one analysis, as I said earlier. Okay, again, play around. Don't just use the code that I put in the script and assume that's going to work for your data. As I said, start with one or two subjects, structurals, toy around with BET, and see what it does and see what works the best. Just take a little time to play. Okay, and then the QA, you're going to load the original brain and the mask that's created in FSL view. So when you run this, I have a directory here. Um, yes. So here's what your directory will look like after you run it. You're going to have a high res image, a high res brain mask, that's the mask, and the high res brain. So this will be the actual um, skull strip brain. So underscore brain implies that it's a brain only. And this is just a binary mask. So again, the naming convention, you want the only difference between your image with and without brain to be underscore brain. And that'll be handy for later on when we use FNERT. Okay, so QA step. So here is an example. This is, I have a bunch of, this is like a cooking show where suddenly they have a bunch of things cooked up. I've run bet with a lot of different options. This is the standard bet. So what I've done is I loaded up the brain with the skull and this is the mask that was created just using bet without any flags. I just used the minus M flag so that I got this mask. So the slider at the bottom, if you highlight the image of interest, you can slide this and make it opaque. So that's helpful if you want to see below. So I typically just start at the top of the brain and go down. And usually where things go amiss are around the eyeballs. So you can see here, it's getting a little bit too much of non-brain for my liking. It's not too bad though. I wouldn't be too worried about that, but otherwise it's doing a good job. So that's standard bet. I'm going to turn that off by double clicking it. You can also, uh, oh man, I don't even know. Right, you can also click this checkbox by the eye, but I don't know, I just like double clicking it. So on the next one, I use bet with the minus R flag. So that's the robust center estimation. It's just blue because I made it blue and do the same thing. And actually let's put the original underneath it. So you can see here, I'm gonna zoom in using this uh, looking glass. Or, yep. So you can see that it's doing a little bit better. Um, it's getting less of this stuff than the standard was. Let's go back to where we were. And yeah, otherwise it's about the same. Ooh, a little less here too. Okay, so here is with minus R, minus S. This is really kind of for something else. Um, I didn't like how this one came out. I remember, yeah, it's giving me weird holes in the middle. See how there's a hole here? Not cool. So that one's not great. And here's the bias one. Oh, this one's just too small. Let me turn this off here. So it's actually missing brain. So anyway, um, and then you can run it. I, I've done this before with a bunch of minus F settings um, and uh, minus G settings to see what, if I can get the greatest. So based on this, the minus R was the best. I missed all this stuff. So that is what I decided upon for my script. FYI, if you hit this letter I, you can change the name of the image as it's displayed here. It won't change the actual file but it'll change it as it's displayed. And another trick is if you wanna to move to a different image, you don't have to close this window. You can just click on it in the list 
and do whatever you want to do. If I want to make this blue instead of red, I can do that there. Um, yeah. So you can just cl click around. So this is nice for if, when you load a bunch of things up into FSL view and you want to be able to keep things straight. So for example, you may have run multiple analyses that have a Thresh Z stat one in them and you want to overlay them on the same brain. Uh, it gets really confusing, even though you can open this and see the path to the file, um, that might not, that's kind of cumbersome. Uh, so you can change it temporarily. Again, it won't change the file name. All right, so I have decided bet minus R is the winner, and I am going to bet that it will often be the winner for you as well. So the script I've written for you is, there's a link again in the info box, is this one underscore flip fix run bet anatomical. So flip fix, remember last time, where is it? Here, if your anatomical loads up like this, see, see how this is flipped around, um, the nose, is supposed to be facing this way. And likewise, the front of the brain should be up here. But importantly, these labels are correct. So if these labels are correct, if these labels aren't correct, you're gonna have to do more work uh, to fix your image. But if the labels are correct, and I think most of the time they will be, you can fix this so that when you display it, it looks more like uh, this orientation. You can fix that using this FSL reorient to STD command. So I have it commented out because for the data I'm using, this was not an issue. So again, if you're using the same data set I'm doing, the DS008, um, let me get rid of this. I don't need this. It's troubleshooting it. Then um, you will not use this line, so leave it commented out. So I put it here for those of you who do need it. If you do need it, just remove this comment. If you don't need it, leave it commented out, but leave it in there in case you need it in the future. So here is the actual important thing, the bet call. And you can see I'm using the minus capital R flag for this robust center estimation and the minus M so that it generates the mask so I can do the QA step. And yes, you're gonna wanna go through and do that QA step for each and every structural image. Luckily, you only have one per subject. Um, sometimes you're gonna have, what do you do if it doesn't do a good job? Sometimes you just end up with a ton of neck or a ton of eyeballs. And in that case, um, one thing to try is if you have FreeSurfer installed on the system you're using, FreeSurfer does often a pretty good job with the skull stripping. And that is actually the skull strip images that were supplied with the DS008 data. I'm 85% sure those were skull stripped using um, FreeSurfer. So there are a series of steps here. I have not put them within these OS system calls, which is what you will need to do in your Python script in the loop, but I'm at least giving you the code. I have tested this code at the command line. I have not tested it in Python, which is why I'm not giving it. So first step, you have to gun zip the high res. I'm almost positive it has to be unzipped. Uh, the next step is to run this recon all, auto recon one, put the proper paths in here. So obviously path slash two slash anatomy, you want to actually replace that with the full path. Um, the sub ID, this is going to create a directory called auto recon and it has a ton of stuff in it. And we're actually going to delete that once we get what we wanted. And then, um, right. So this will create the skull strip brain, but you won't get a mask. And actually at this point, it's in an MGZ file and you have to run this MRI convert line here, again, fixing the paths to get a nifty file. And you'll see it won't be zipped. So the very last two steps, first we're going to delete the auto recon directory. You may not want to do this until you've verified everything else worked. Um, if this MRI convert failed and you have to tweak it, you don't want to rerun the recon all command because it takes about 15, 20 minutes to run. So the first time running this, and I, would, I wouldn't go gung-ho and run it on everybody, I would just do a, a single subject first. Um, don't delete this file until you verified MRI convert works. And last, zip up your, your nifties to save some space. And this will zip up um, the one you unzipped as well as your uh, underscore brain. So there you go, that's a secondary way to do it. Worst case scenario, you have to like hand edit the mask 
and that's really labor intensive. So hopefully you won't have to do that. If anybody has other skull stripping uh, strategies that they have found worked really well for their data, uh, let us know and um, I will add it again at the end of all this to the uh, overview. Okay. We already, we already did it. So in summary, again, play with bet until you get a good result. If you can't get a re good result, try the free surfer option. And for your QA step, load your mask um, and the original brain uh, in FSL view. If you're, oh, I should have showed you. Actually have the result from, this is the free surfer. So since free, for, free surfer gives a brain instead of a um, mask, you can create a mask if you want to. Um, I just loaded the brain up and made it uh, yellow. And you can do a quick check here. I can see right here it didn't, if you look in this panel as I move around, see it kind of gets a little bit too much there. But otherwise, does a better job with the eyeballs. This this one I don't think requires free surfer. Um, Yes, and if you did not do a good job skull stripping, uh, hopefully we will catch it during the QA for image registration, which is coming up soon. Right, and that will help answer how bad is bad. The only reason, again, that we're removing the skull is to help with the image registration. So, um, and it depends on if you're using an affine image registration or uh, nonlinear. That's all I have. So thank you very much. Please join the Facebook group or Tumblr or follow on Twitter or all three. And again, if you have a QA step that's faster than loading all these images, let me know. I know there are ways to overlay two images and create a PNG. I've just never felt satisfied with that, but maybe you have a way that does it better. Um, what else? Or if you have any other tips that you use, things that you think are much better ways of skull stripping, let me know and I'll put it together in this final, at the end of all this, I'm gonna create a like master um, set of steps for data analysis that will have all these other options in it. So thanks a lot and have a great day.